Welcome back to TSO Daily Dose. Today we have an incredibly special guest joining us today in the studio. The Governor of Tasmania, Her Excellency Professor Kate Warner. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Mitch. It's a pleasure to be here. You're the most esteemed guest we've ever had come in, so I'd like to sincerely thank you for coming in today. You've been the Governor of Tasmania for for six years now. Yes, and, yes. Uh, they've almost just, six years. They've mm. just extended your term slightly. Um, yes. Can we talk about uh, the, how this, how you've taken on this role and, and how music has played a part in that as well? Well, I have to confess that I'm not a particularly musical person, mm. although... I enjoy music and sometimes the most, you know, I've had the most moving experiences with music. For example, during COVID-19, everything's been closed down and no contact with families at first. Mm. And I had a really special Mother's Day present from my daughter and granddaughter and they sang Fields of Barley to me, that sting song. Oh, my goodness, as a duet, it was so gorgeous. (laughs) I kept, they sent me a little recording and I kept, Playing, and I've played it quite a few times, I have to say. That's so and beautiful. And it brings a tear to my eye each time. So, you, so you've raised a musical daughter, have you? Uh, <laughs> she can yes, sing? Yes, she can sing. She can sing. Do you sing? Did you ever? No, <laughs> no. I don't sing. In fact, I'm even in church, my daughter Meg has said to me, Mum, would you mind not singing today? <laughs> <laughs> if all, I quite like singing hymns, but places, I do it not well. Of all places where you can get away with I know you usually can, but it's embarrassing for children when they're younger, you know, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, it can be, it can be. Through, through your time as, as Governor, you've obviously travelled around the state and, and seen yes. a lot and done a lot of things. Yes. The TSO travels a lot too and, and we go to these places and it feels so good to take our music to them. Yeah. Um, and as you get to represent them and, and be such an integral part of I community love, life. We love travelling around the state. It's yes. a bit like, you know, a holiday with speeches in between. <laughs> so it's, it, it's terrific. And so we go to all sorts of places, um, especially schools, we, a lot of schools, and I really love going to schools and talking to kids yeah. and love that they often perform for us and just seeing the music experience a lot of our kids get. I wished all of them could have that yes. and have a really good, you know, music teacher and instruments and the opportunity. It's, it's, I think that is so important. Yeah. But it... I love just talking to the kids generally about trying to encourage them to stick to their education and, you know, to enjoy it and embrace it. And education is so important. What's, what's a favourite work of yours in the classical music repertoire? Well, have I got a particularly favourite piece? Well, you've asked me to think of some <laughs> suggestions. Yes. And I chose Eleanor Katz Chernin's Eliza. piece, Eliza. Aria, yes, yes, from, from, from the, the Wild Swans, Swans Ballet, yes. I'd heard that piece first on Late Night Live because it was Philip Adams used it oh. for many years to um, introduce his show. Oh, okay. And, you know, I thought that's a really wonderful piece of music. And actually before he had, he had that for a couple of years mm-hmm. and they had another Eleanor Katz Chernin piece before that, The Russian Rag. Oh, yes. Yes, so he did that one. And then so I'd heard of Eleanor Katz Chernin, of okay. course, for this reason, and then I had the opportunity to meet her. She, she's a fantastically yes. interesting character, isn't yes. she? So, yes, she is an interesting character. <laughs> so she was in Hobart. I think she was at Friends School for a while. Okay. She was doing a kind of a, um, a composition thing with some musicians at the school. And so they came along to Government House and played a piece. And, um, yeah, that was marvellous, and to meet her. And then I asked her to play this piece too and she played it for oh me. really so that was wow of course she would but yes <laughs> i don't know if that you was were there. pretty amazing a, a couple of years ago we did a, a piano concerto by eleanor and tamara anna chislovska yeah. was uh performing it right, and yeah. at the end uh they got uh, up on stage together and performed an impromptu encore because eleanor was just full of excitement yes. and to share the moment with yes. with everyone so yes i can imagine no, that would she, have been and special. she was very very accessible very modest i thought a very gorgeous woman and what an interesting story Oh, fascinating. For her life, yes, and she's just been so successful. I, I know that um, one of the other pieces <coughs> you suggested was uh, was a Bach. Yes. The Art of the Fugue. Yes. I was I was listening to uh, Glenn Gould's uh, Goldberg Variations mm. last night and it occurred to me that 
Bach is such a precise and technical composer. Did you choose, were you drawn to Bach as your other suggestion because of your academic background? And, you know, no, you, not <laughs> at all, not at all. Now, this is a weird reason why I chose these. Well, not really so weird, but um, I love reading. And years ago, I bought a novel by Vikram Seth called An Equal Music. Mm. And with the novel came the CD of the music that's mentioned in the novel. So the novel is really about musicians. Oh, wow. Yes, and one of them is a violinist and the other a pianist, the main characters. Mm -hmm. I just adored the book and it kind of gave me a better understanding of music. As I explained to you, I'm not very musical and don't know a lot about music. But this was gave me a great understanding of the meaning that music has for people and what it's like to live as a musician. Yeah. And so I played, of course, the CD that came with the book and so... That the Art of the Fugue is a very important piece yes. in the book. Have you read the book? No, I haven't read the book, but I know it's a very important piece. But it's a, but it's a very, yeah, and it's a, it's a great book. The other piece that I mentioned too is also in the book. Oh, okay. So the, the violinist, when he was eight, he came from a relatively underprivileged family, but when he was eight years old, somebody played to him The Lark Ascending, for oh, Williams' The Lark Ascending, yes. and he was blown away by it, and that's what made him become a... A violinist. Oh, wow. So that's why that's, I was just yeah. so taken with the whole story. And I find that so fascinating that you've come to these uh, these pieces through a novel. I, I, I find music a great method for telling stories, but this is a way where a, a great story was aided for by me, music. For me, yes, yeah. yes. So, yes, so... You can get to music in different ways. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Any way in is a good way, you yes, know. Yes. Um, well, it, it's been such an honour and a privilege to have you come in today. Uh, I won't take up too much more of your time because you're a very busy lady. So thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Pleasure, Mitch. And uh, I've we'll, enjoyed chatting. Oh, it's, it's been great. Thank you so much. And we'll finish this clip today uh, with... Elena Katz-Chernin's Eliza Aria from the suite Wild Swans.